Bob Johnson, thank you so much for joining CNBC. It's always great to have you on the program. I want to kick off by asking you, what the heck is going on over there? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the best part of what's happening is people are voting. And in a democracy, it's the most important thing you can do. Uh, and so the question, though, is how much of politics and tribal kind of animosity, if you will, uh, on both sides is going to lead to a fight in the uh, courts, maybe going all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And if that it, happens, we're not going to know what the issue is, what the solution is to who won the election for some time. When you think of it against the backdrop of the last four years, you and I have spoken about this on multiple occasions. And at least two of those occasions, you were quite bullish, at least on the president's economic agenda. What's been really interesting in these exit polls is to see that the president didn't actually gain ground with white men, which would assume which we would assume is his base, but he gained ground with minorities. What's behind that? Do you think that that is just a reflection of the way that things were working for him? Well, well I'm still bullish on the uh, president's agenda. I mean, if you, if you think about it, for uh, African Americans, under Trump's leadership, we had the lowest unemployment rate for black Americans in over 50 years, almost since they've been keeping uh, statistics on it. Uh, we also saw investments in uh, black businesses to, and uh, black communities through the Opportunity Zones. So you think that's how people were voting because the Trump plan was actually working for them? I also think black Americans were somewhat lackadaisical about, to say the least, about their support for Joe Biden and by extension the Democrats' policy. I think uh, black Americans are getting a little bit tired of delivering huge votes for the Democrats and seeing minimal uh, return in terms of economic wealth, the closing the wealth gap, uh, job uh, creation, job opportunities. And uh, Joe Biden was not an inspiring candidate for uh, many black Americans. And uh, some of them stayed home, some of them voted for Trump. Uh, well, we so to me, the issue for, for, for the president now is well, obviously he's got to win. And the challenge is going to be uh, overcoming um, the mail-in ballots uh, that are still to be counted. That's absolutely right. And I think that's going to be something that's going to be a major sticking point over the next couple of days, no matter what side of this question you fall on. But when you think about this with regards to Joe Biden and his plans specifically, I mean, this is a gentleman who's 78 years old as you say, was someone that a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, found uninspiring as a candidate. But uh, folks that I spoke to said, hey, you know what, just give him six to 12 months and it's really going to be a Kamala Harris presidency. Is this a reflection on the fact that maybe the Democrats just didn't do a very good job of selling her? Well, I, I don't think that uh, the... Um Kamala Harris uh, issue is the one that drove uh, black voters to not like Joe Biden. I, I think what drove black people to uh, not embrace Biden is he never articulated a policy that went directly to the concerns of black Americans. And uh, having Kamala Harris on the ticket was really, in my opinion, a, a sort of sock to uh, black Americans, because once you say, I'm just going to uh, have a black vice presidential uh, candidate and a female, you already limited your choices to uh, just a few candidates. And K Kamala's performance during the primary was totally uninspiring for not only black men, but black women and the black population in general. So whether or not she'll be uh, the de facto president or not, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's going to be whoever is the uh, person behind the throne, you know, whispering in the president's ear. So I'm thinking you're in, uh, this is European kind of uh, story. Of, I'm saying who's the Metternich, who's the Bismarck, who's the Machiavelli? That's what I'm concerned about because I don't think uh, Biden has that leadership quotient that's going to allow him to do what is critical to bring the economy back, do the trade-off between 
restoring the economy and fighting the pandemic. That's a critical decision that a real leader will have to make. Uh, I think Trump was on his way trying to spread, as, you know, spread that needle of the trade-off. I, all I've heard from Joe Biden on the issue is science rules and the economy has to stand in line behind the science. That is not a policy position. A policy position necessitates trade-offs. How do I achieve both objectives? Solve the horrific pandemic, keep the U.S. economy the leader, the global leader in the world. No doubt about it. And I think it's something that I'm often trying to explain to colleagues in Europe and the rest of the West. You know, Americans don't cue. Um, it's a difficult, it's difficult to apply the policies that we're seeing playing out in Europe in terms of those total lockdowns to the United States. We're seeing a spike, though, in cases across America. Is the next president, in your view, going to have to lock it all down? Or is that even possible at this point? Well, well that's, that's what I'm most afraid of. Once you run a campaign on the basis of everything has to be decided uh, by the scientists. And once you do that, how do you back away from that in a way that convinces the American people all you were doing during the campaign was selling us a uh, anti-Trump philosophy that Trump caused the pandemic and Trump is responsible for the pandemic and I'm going to do something different. But I would challenge anybody to, to show me exactly what President Biden will do differently, particularly to address the unprecedented impact and the disparity of the impact that the coronavirus has had on black Americans. If you can't bring the economy back for everybody, you darn sure can't bring it back for black Americans because we're at the bottom of the rung uh, in terms of economic opportunity and economic access to wealth, capital, and income. So how do you make black Americans whole from an economic justice standpoint or an equity standpoint if you don't get the economy driving the jobs and the opportunities that have to uh, filter down to black Americans since they're already, as I said, at the bottom. So to me, it's a question of if you focus on the health and the science totally, and ignore the, the economy and the growth of the economy, Black Americans are going to be way behind in any kind of recovery that comes about. You know, one of the questions that was asked by one of our colleagues um, in the last debate was pretty much uh, trying to frame both these candidates and, and say, you know, uh, how do you relate to the experience of Black Americans? When you think about that with regards to what you've seen played out over the last four years in terms of Black Lives Matter, the riots, the pushback on the justice system, um, do you feel like mainstream media is just really missing the boat on what's important to the black community at this point? Because there have been so many calls by colleagues of mine across multiple networks. You know, the president is a racist. This isn't an administration that gives people of color a fair shake. Do you believe that, or do you think that they're just across the board missing the boat on this one? No, what I believe is that mainstream media and the white liberal population in general, the only thing that they address the black community on is what I call placebo paternalism. We will say nice things about you. We will talk about your suffering. We will say that there's racism throughout the land. But when you go to the core issues of what black Americans really need, and that's access to capital, access to wealth and income. Today in America, the black income is 10 times less that of white Americans. White Americans on the median have a net income of $170,000. The average black household out of 40 million black households, the median, has a net income of $17,000. I have not heard one uh, progressive, one left-leaning uh, candidate or the Democratic Party as a whole say, how do we close the wealth gap in a, in a, in a uh, capitalist economy? I know how you can do it in a socialist economy. You can just freeze everybody at the top and push everybody from the bottom up. 
You can't do that in a capitalist economy. A good friend of mine who's, who's a, a billionaire, he has a famous saying, you know, Bob, uh, there's a wealth gap between myself and Warren Buffett. But the difference is between black America and white America, if I've got money, white American can suffer a catastrophic loss of say the roof being blown off and having $170,000, they can fix it. A black family with $17,000, if all of a sudden they have a catastrophic event in their house or in their appliances that they need to you know, keep food in the refrigerator and it breaks down, $3,000, $4,000 for a refrigerator is a emotional impact on a black family who has no access to capital to solve that catastrophic challenge. So, so to me, what I look for for progressive and liberals is, is to say, look, what do black Americans really need? It's capital, access to capital, access to opportunity that gives them a chance to uh, deliver all that they want out of the American dream. Nobody speaks to that. They speak to uh, you know, voter suppression, yes. They speak to uh, police brutality. All these things are valid, but America is a capitalist nation and in a capitalist nation, value is measured by your access to opportunity and the right to compete and achieve. And that's what the black community, in my opinion, wants to hear. Bob, do you think that four more years of Donald Trump is a good thing for the black community? I'll put it this way, uh, based on if you take the past four years, the answer would be yes. If you take the uh, notion that Trump is focuses on building the economy, uh, building manufacturing, uh, creating more jobs, then the answer again is yes. And so to me, I, I'm not fearful that a Trump reelection is going to be a, an assault on the political, cultural, social rights of Black Americans. Uh, it didn't show up in the past four years in terms of economic opportunity. You know? And so to me, I don't see what the Black community has gotten over the past uh, eight years of Democratic leadership or what, as I said, Joe Biden's put on the table. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard things like uh, reparations. Well, uh, I can guarantee you that there will be no reparations bill coming out of uh, Joe Biden's uh, if he's elected, because it won't it won't pass the House, it won't pass the Senate, because this country does not really believe in reparations. And and so, to me, the issue is. What do you do to get black Americans equal? It, it's, it, to me, it's simple. What do you do to get white Americans at $170,000 net income versus 17,000 for blacks? You give them access to capital. The one thing I, I know about money, money does not die. Money circulates, money moves around. White Americans have access to money that they can circulate in investments and in savings and in the stock market. Black Americans don't have that. So to me, if you want to solve the problems of Black Americans, uh, focus on what makes white Americans more wealthy than Black Americans. It's not just simple, we got to get more education. We, we spent billions of dollars on education ever since the end of uh, the Civil War on Black Americans. And yet, today, by statistics, a white American with a high school degree has a 32% chance of being a millionaire over a black American with a master's degree. Those are facts. Uh, and so there's a lot of myths about what is necessary to make black Americans equal. But the answer to me is what makes white Americans richer than black Americans? It's very simple, access to capital. And if you wanna change that, that's the way to do it. Housing is not the answer. Uh, Education, no. Trying to be make Black Americans model citizens like you know this, like Asians or other. There was a uh, story. There was a uh, article in Axo, Axios about ten myths of the wealth gap, and they debunked all of the traditional progressive 
ideology about how to get more, uh, make black Americans equally uh, in terms of wealth. So I put out a press release and challenged black Americans and the black caucus, everybody, hey, debunk these myths, if, if you can't, provide an alternative uh, argument. They couldn't Bob, come up. Here, then that leads me to my final question, which is, you seem to know what you're talking about. Would you ever consider running for office? Unequivocally, no. Bob, we're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you for joining CNBC. Take care.